Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is the second lecture. We're going to be discussing about uh, data structures in this lecture today. It becomes uh, important to have some basic idea about data structures before we go ahead and learn more complex algorithms. In the previous lecture, we learned about uh, what algorithms are basic concepts, basic idea behind algorithms. Uh, we, we saw the flowchart with some examples. We developed some basic understanding about algorithms. We also, we also converted a, an algorithm to find a maximum number to a C++ program and saw the differences between program and an algorithm. Today, we're going to be discussing about data structures. In a simple way, a data structure is a way to organize the data. In real world example, let's say you go to library, you ask for a particular book with a librarian. Now think about if the books are not ordered in a particular order, and it would be too difficult to find a single book which you need among hundreds of thousands of books in the library. In the library, librarian, they have a certain procedure, they have a certain order how to arrange books and that is uh, depicted typically how the books are arranged um, on a, you know, in a catalog you can see uh, where, how you can use the catalog and find the book quickly and easily. The same concept is applied for computer data structures. Um, in other words, uh, you may think of verbs as functions and data as nouns. In this simple example, for adding the two integer numbers, add is a function, int is a data type, and say three and four, number three and four, that becomes the data. So data structure is defined by two things, a logical arrangement of data elements and set of operations to assess that element. For example, in computer world, its information is stored in one and zero. Now, how do you arrange that one and zero to get some meaning? So you have some, you know, we have some data structures Let's say we arrange the data in an array and then we uh, specify certain operation on an array to assess a particular value. <clears throat> now here an important concept comes about data abstraction. In simple words, data abstraction is, is to separate out computer's view of the data from our own view. For example, a decimal number can be represented in an 8-bit binary uh, in a form of a string of 0 and 1. And it's unsigned decimal representation. The same number can be represented in a signed and magnitude representation with minus 25 or in one complement representation as minus 1 or 2. So internal representation of the same number can be different for different machine types. Let's say the same number can be represented by different, uh, say different strings of 0 and 1 for 32-bit machine. And same number can be represented by a different uh, string of 0 and 1 for a 64-bit machine um, using different notations, say maybe one complement, maybe two complement representation. Important thing here is to understand that the data abstraction provides a mechanism to abstract the data. Uh, the same data can be represented in different views for different people to understand. Or a simple example, like let's say we say I go in English, but its translation or its view 
may be different in different languages. Say in French, it might be different. In German, it might be different. Or say in Hindi, it might be different. In Sanskrit, it might be different. But it is the same, uh, same thing. But representation is different. More formally, data abstraction is the separation of data types, logical properties from its implementation. Another important concept uh, comes handy here, the abstract data types. The abstract data types are the data types whose properties uh, are specified independently of any particular implementation. Um, let's say uh, a complex number. Complex number has two parts, real and imaginary. Now that complex number can be represented uh, using record, using hash, or maybe, you know, just a simple uh, list. It depends how programmer wants to arrange it. Now it becomes more more at the abstract level. Now if you want to run an operation on complex number, let's say add to complex number. So the add operation then needs to be translated into an algorithm so that uh, it can be implemented. Now the algorithm will operate on the data structure. Now how the data is stored, what are the real part, what are the imaginary part and uh, how to do the uh, say multiplication or addition operation that becomes the algorithm. Or in other words, a data structure is how the data is implemented in an abstract data type. Different examples of abstract data type can be matrices, sets, trees, graphs, queue, stack, string, etc. Here let's see a simple example of a matrix. It's one by two, one row and two column matrix. In a simple mathematical notation, we can represent it this way. And if we want to do a multiplication, a scalar multiplication by 2 to this matrix M, we can do it in this way to uh, multiply each element in a row by 2. And then we get the result, result matrix. Now how this can be implemented? by a program or in a computer. So computer doesn't know our view like mathematics view. So we need to specify data in a certain order or in a certain fashion. Let's say we decide to implement it as an array. So at the array position 0, we store in computer memory number 5. At array position 1, we store number 7. Now here the array's view programmer view is a position 0 and 1 but when it goes to the computer's memory it will just be a conti continuous block of memory. Let's say uh, we talk about the 8-bit implementation. So 5 would be implemented by 8-bit string 0101 then 7 next 8-bit string 0101. So it's a continuous string of 0 and 01. But the data structure tells at this address up to 8 bits means the location 0. Okay, so now uh, let's develop an algorithm to do scalar multiplication. So we said data structure here uh, we can you know store in a list, an order list or an array. For simplicity let's take an array A. What would be the algorithm? In each so step first would be we need a uh, matrix or so we need a storage location or we need a container where we can put our result. So we specify an array R, we initialize it with some default number or zero number. <clears throat> and then we take, now the second step, for each element in and in the array A, that is number 5, number 7, we multiply each 
number by 2 and then store the result at the same location in array R which is our result array. So let's say location number 0 or position number 0 in array A its value is 5 so we fetch this value from the location 0 in array A and we get number 5 we multiply number 5 by 2 we get the result 10 and we store number 10 at position number 0 in array R and we do the same operation for the next position or the next element in an array till we finish the whole array. Now step 3 your array R contains the result or the product R. Isn't it simple? It's very simple. Always remember it's the way how we organize the data. We do these things in our regular day-to-day -day life like we have different files. We sort those files um, based on um, different things which we have in those files. For example, you go to lawyer's office and lawyer may have 10 clients. So he may have 10 different files for each client and it is stored in lawyer's office in a certain order. It's in the same way. If data is stored in a certain order, it belong, it, it, it means we need a data structure or a, or a um, in other words, an ordered structure to arrange the data elements. <coughs> a data can be arranged in a different manner that leads to different data structures. For example, an ordered list, unordered list, a stack where you a stack you can think of last in first out means that whatever element goes in the end comes out first. Q Q is a regular Q you observe in your day to day life first in first out then priority queues array linked list heap binary trees um, circular list or doubly linked list etc etc. The objective of this lecture is not to go in detail in implementing all those data structures for, for now. Uh, we might go in future discussing about each kind of data structure, how do we implement it. But for here, the objective was to give a basic understanding about data structures. Now another important question arises. Now we have so many data structures, which one to use? Now it's a, it's a complex question and the answer is very simple. It depends on the application. It depends on the algorithm. Some algorithms are work better with binary trees and some algorithms work better with the heap or other algorithms work better, uh, better with an array. Now it depends on the complexity too, how complex our, our operation is or let's say we have just 10 uh, numbers. So we can you know use an array fixed numbers. But if we don't know how big our list gonna be, then we use a dynamic memory, um, you know, um, dynamic memory allocation and then keep on building up as, uh, as much as we can. Then the, the same algorithm may not be efficient in that situation. So the simple answer would be it depends on application, what you're gonna do. Uh, it depends on algorithm, how you wanna uh, write an algorithm and then um, you may choose the data structure. Of course, um, the, the combination of algorithm and data structure, it leads to your different time complexity. Those uh, runtime complexity, uh, space time complexity, uh, we're going to be discussing in future lectures.
um, do not forget to subscribe uh, Lee Professor YouTube channel it will um, help you to get uh, new videos as soon as those are available um, if you have questions or you need private lessons you may contact me at my email hr at leeprofessor.org and uh, thank you for listening to me I hope you enjoyed uh, this small video lecture your comments are very welcome I would try to improve uh, the quality of the contents and in general if you have any difficulty let's say in any subconcept uh, I may create another video uh, for, for that specific topic um, thank you again for subscribing and have a wonderful day